Greetings, and thank you for joining us for another SANS ICS Concept Overview. I'm Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security and a certified SANS instructor. In this video, we will discuss ICS attack methodology to understand the methods used by adversaries that want to gain access to our control networks and achieve their desired actions. If you like this video and the topics we cover in the SANS ICS Concept Overviews, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment if you have a question about this topic or suggestions for future content. Okay, the next thing that we want to talk about in the SANS ICS concept videos are attackers. Attackers are going to be coming after your control networks. We have to protect our process and it can be kind of overwhelming. All of the different things that we have to take into consideration uh, with protecting our process. You know, we're, we're used to recovering our process. We're used to things going wrong, uh, replacing certain components, whether it's a, a fill device or controller, uh, dealing with network outages. We understand that. But when we add in a cyber component to it, when we add in attackers that are coming in and using some of our resources against us, this can get really confusing very quickly. It can seem overwhelming. Okay. And so what we've done as a part of the SANS ICS program is we've come up with this poster. And we're going to review this poster real quick. We've got five uh, main uh, domains, I guess, if you want to call them. I'm going to drill specifically into one of them, but we want to cover all five real quickly. Okay. As you can see on the um, uh, in the video right now, uh, number one are the system variables. When we're talking about our control networks, we're not just talking about our control networks. We're talking about all of the things that make it up. Okay, so not so we also have a corporate network. We have physical security. We have all of the uh, the organization that goes into de deploying our control networks. We've got vendors. We've got integrators, and these are all of our system variables. No organization looks the same. Actually, for a lot of organizations, they'll have multiple plants multiple plants that do the same things, but they've been built at different times, built by different people. And so that it significantly increases the complexity of these areas because those two plants are going to be different. So there's a lot of variables that go into it, and this is going to help you discuss some of those variables with your team. The second area uh, that we can see here is the cyber maturity variables. And this is just talking about your cybersecurity program how you've broken it down, how you've decided to address cybersecurity within your corporate network and within your control network. All of this plays a factor on how attackers are going to come after your systems. If you've deployed a certain type of antivirus or if you've got logging, they're going to have to take that into consideration. But your, your team also needs to consider, take into consideration where that cybersecurity program needs improvement. So this kind of helps you understand the maturity of your program, uh, how it's going to, how attackers are going to change their uh, methodology, their approach to coming after you. And so this will help your team talk about areas, gaps, and so forth associated with your cybersecurity program. When we're talking about attackers are attacking our networks, we should consider what their capabilities are. And so this, uh, the, the third area is the, the adversary capabilities. Now, this goes from script kitty, for, you know, people that are just uh, getting security tools off, off of the internet that are just using Shodan uh, to identify assets that are hanging on the internet and then accessing them via uh, you know, weak credentials, you know, uh, through RDP or VNC, uh, TeamViewer, and uh, other resources like that, you know, all the way up to the nation state adversaries, the adversaries that have a lot of teams, that have a lot of personnel with specific skills associated with corporate networks and with control networks. And, you know, so understanding all of the different capabilities uh, that attackers can bring to bear against us really helps us prioritize our security efforts, prioritize what we're going to think about when we're talking about protecting our control network. So understanding the adversary's capabilities and we can help modify our thought process and you know really improve how we're talking about some of these scenarios within our teams. 
the other two areas uh, that are defined by the poster, we have our number four, which is our adversary methods, and we're going to drill into that very specifically in just a moment. Number five are our external drivers, uh, and you know the, those are things that are important as well, uh, specifically when uh, associated with talking about uh, the excess, su our successes and our failures when it comes to incident response. Okay, but we want to drill into number four, and so I'm going to change windows to that. So hopefully you have a little bit better view of that. And the reason why I want to drill into the adversary methods is this is going to be the actual actions on objective. These are going to be the attackers steps within our organization, things that are going to be actually against us that we are able to detect and respond to. Okay, so if we understand what the attacker is going to be doing within our network, then we can hopefully identify them, uh, kick them out as quickly as possible, uh, or address situations when they actually have success within our organization. And one of the biggest things that people don't really understand is that attacks against control networks are two stage attacks, and we've got them defined here. So stage one is going to be our corporate network. It's going to be against our corporate network. It could be attackers could get directly into our control network. And so stage one could be a part of that. Uh, but typically what we've seen uh, when analyzing uh, successful attacks against control networks is stage one is against the corporate network. They plan and prepare by doing OSINT, open source intelligence gathering, understand our organization, what type of uh, control or what type of uh, controls that we have in place, what type of technologies we have in place so that they can plan for their attack. Okay, then once they've gathered this information, once they've looked at different things and they understand how they want to approach us, whether they want to leverage that external team viewer and, and to, uh, attempt to brute force the credentials to access it, or whether they want to do some type of uh, phishing attack or waterhole attack. Uh, waterholing is where they compromise a vendor and then upload malware uh, to replace the software that they're delivering uh, to their clients. Um, you know, the, the adversaries, the attackers will select the method for gaining access into the organization and then they'll implement it. And what they're hoping for is they're hoping for that cyber intrusion. Okay, they're hoping that some type of payload, some type of malware um, is uh, executed uh, within the organization, or maybe they've got some direct access, as I mentioned, through TeamViewer. Uh, maybe they've compromised an external VPN, and now they have access to the into the organization. And once they get that uh, foothold, once they get that beachhead within our corporate network, then they're going to start gathering information. In other words, they need to expand their understanding of our corporate network and with the goal of uh, getting to our uh, to our control network. And so they'll do things like uh, um, gather credentials, administrative credentials, credentials for our engineers and our operators. They'll start looking for documentation associated with uh, the uh, the network uh, and the control network, so how we're de deploying our processes, where they're at, who has access to those. Uh, they'll also start uh, moving around the environment. They want to gain persistence, so they'll propagate to other assets, trying to gain a foothold in different areas that might improve their chances of getting into our control network. In other words, if they uh, get onto a system that is uh, um, that is used by our human resources, okay? And, but that, that human resources team, that person, their systems can't get into our control networks. They'll try to migrate to something like our financial area, try to get to the SAP servers so they can leverage some of the trust relationships associated with the business computers, and maybe that will allow them to hop into uh, the control network. And so that it will be a part of stage one, that information gathering and uh, getting enough data, getting enough credentials and information so that they can do that middle part right there, which is the bridge from stage one to stage two. Okay, They need to leverage the information that they've gathered to get into the control network if that's their goal. Okay, So stage two will be the control network. 
once they've got once they're able to uh, get onto systems within the control network they'll attempt to do all of stage one again okay if they have uh, you know uh, for instance if they're able to uh, get onto a uh, another workstation uh, laptop uh, HMI within the control network then they're going to need to gather additional information about that they're going to need to gather more credentials credentials that provide them the access that they need within the control network so they'll still do some of the steps from stage one to further their means uh, in stage two however their ultimate goal it more than likely is going to be to attack the process in some manner okay when we think about you know some of the you know the first thing that pops into everybody's mind and of course we have to say it's Stuxnet uh, um, we can also talk about Tritus uh, and you know those are attacks actually against the process so attacks against the endpoints right if they're doing those types of attacks they're gonna have to develop those attacks they're gonna have to understand get an understanding of the process understand what points that they have to manipulate what are the devices uh, that are involved with that manipulation how do we gain access to that and how do we bypass the protections that are implemented associated with control so they need to develop and tune their attack validate that it works whether it's in our own environment which increases the noise or with it, whether it's within their own test environment which is what they prefer but a lot of times uh, we will see in understanding that we will probably see some noise some activity have experienced some actions associated with some of this uh, attack tuning the validation that the attack will be successful in our environment okay and then once the attackers have have that get to that point then they will implement their attack against our control network so we see the delivery install and modify and execute ICS attack all right now we talked about attacks against the physical environment this might not you know that might not be their goal their goal might be to just disrupt services so that they can get payment so they might it might be a ransomware attack well, they're still going to do the stage two, uh, stage two um, steps that we talked about, which are gathering information. They're going to need to gather credentials, understand which will have the maximum impact with this, within this environment. So they're still going to do those steps, and then they'll implement their ransomware, uh, which obviously at that point it was their ultimate goal. Okay, so understanding this two-stage process, understanding that attackers are going to come in to our corporate network or gain access to our control network, maybe directly, but then that they're going to do some type of reconnaissance, gathering information. Understanding that will help us decide what we want to do, prioritize the actions associated with our cybersecurity program, and improve our uh, our solutions and improve our team around detecting and responding to these types of activities and that was my ultimate goal for talking about this thank you for tuning in to another concept overview with the SANS ICS and cutaway security teams please let us know if there are other topics you would like us to cover in the comments below if you enjoyed the content please be sure to like and subscribe to the SANS ICS YouTube channel. This has been Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security. Go forth and do good things.